Right now it's 9.30 in the morning. I just woke up, started my work day, and I feel like maybe we actually did open the gates of hell in my basement because it is absolutely apocalyptic out right now. It looks like the world's coming to an end out here. Yep, that's pretty fucked. I didn't think it'd be this difficult to get a Slayer tone out of all the shit I have here, but yeah, I'm surprised. We decided to set up this kind of impromptu demo because last week we hit you guys with a pretty crazy video. Maybe we should explain that a little bit to <laughs> them and kind of let yeah. them know what's up. So piggybacking off of the Metallic episode where we talked about leading down the path to extreme metal and you arrive at this gate and once you go beyond that gate you're into death metal but at that gate you run into slayer and that is sort of like your threshold for getting to the next level they're the final boss yeah. of the thrash level so we went on a mission and invited our good buddies kyle and sophia over so that we could maybe try to conjure up a really good <laughs> slayer tone yeah and uh maybe write a cool little slayer-esque piece in tribute to Slayer for this episode. And we ended up getting really carried away. Yeah. And then we just basically didn't make the video. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the highlights for you from, from that session? Shooting ideas out there and trying to come up with uh, something that was like a B-grade horror, but that also made us laugh. Wait, come on, you wait, trash wait, wait, whore. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> 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 wait. Do it right before you get a film. It's already rolling. We got it, we got it. Are you in there, Sophia? I'm, I'm in here. But it's Eat, Pray, Love Night. <laughs> <laughs> like those scenes in Evil Dead where the, the darkness is coming through the woods. Kind of thing. So it's creeping up, and then maybe you see as it gets closer to us, you might see some like bird's eye view shots. Music stops, tun, tun, tun. And you actually see like the sigil. It's for Satan and science though. Yeah. <laughs> Also science. For Satan and for science. And then, so there's like the build up to the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and then there's the actual sacrifice. You know, maybe the drop of blood on the floor awakens the robot. And that's what it like, goes for that. Oh, that could be, yeah. Like, yeah. like when the Sophia's blood hits the floor, it's like, oh, it's a mess. It's like an whatever. awakening. <laughs> you know what would be funny? If I stabbed Sophia, go to, and they kind of roll up, no, 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 no. Yeah, and yeah. I go, and I go to, no, 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 hold up. Yeah, and then I'm like, no. Oh. Fuck it! <laughs> Smash your fucking teeth. Yeah, yeah. Knocked out yeah. and then snap. Yeah, there we go. Basically, let's just be stupid and have fun. That might be one of the best Slayer songs. Certainly up there. So we've set up a test here with three different plugins that we picked out, trying to see what gets the best Slayer tone for this piece we worked on for the videos. We have the Softube Marshall Carry King plugin. That seems like it would be the obvious choice for right. getting a Slayer tone. You go directly to the artist. We'll see how that stacks up. And for good measure, we brought out our old trusty friend, Personas Empire. <laughs> That's sort of our control because that's like the stock native amp simulator that comes inside of our DAW, which is Persona Studio One Pro. Next to that, we have the Omega Grandma Fire. You can pretty much pull just about any tone you want out of the Omega. So we got the Marshall, and that's set up with your best. Uh, My best Carrie King impression. Your best Carrie King impression. Uh, now, was, was that based off of his preset in there? Uh, it is. Plug it itself left a little to be desired. The stock Slayer tones did not really sound all that slayery. I ended up fiddling around with it more to get 
what I feel like is a better Slayer tone, but it took a while to dial it. It wasn't just like I grabbed Interesting. Slayer or Carrie King rhythm and boom. I have not yet tried the Softube Marshall Carrie King plugin. I just downloaded the demo straight off Softube's website. You can go check it out if you want as well. None of these companies paid us to check these out or try them out. We're just on the hunt for a Slayer tone for this video so that we could properly uh, tribute Slayer with our guitars. The Kerry King plugin is the most expensive of the bunch at 150 bucks. Mm. Uh, and I feel is a little less versatile than the other two, but it is a signature plugin with what looks to be Kerry King dialed in rhythm sounds. Empire is free with the uh, Studio One. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Omega Granifier, which is 99 euros, probably about 120 bucks. So it's actually less than the Carrie King plugin. It's it's a little less, and I think it's probably the most versatile of the three. So okay, yeah. if any plugin, if it doesn't sound better than the uh, the one that comes stock inside of Studio One, I kind of don't want it. Let's see what we're working with. So go ahead and play it. <laughs> impressions are the Carrie King sounds broken the persona <laughs> sounds average it sounds the way you'd expect a stock amp simulator to sound yeah maybe a little better actually maybe like it's, it's better. surprisingly good for what it is yeah the Omega I have no issues with at all that you could dial it in very easily yeah I mean, um, I certainly could have done much more with the Omega, but I was trying to keep them all about the same. <laughs> so in terms of time, you, you spent about the same amount of time on each of them down yeah, the Yeah, I spent about five to ten minutes on each one. Okay. Well, you know what? I kind of want to hear it again. Because that was my <laughs> first impression. I need to hear the Carry King again, yeah. for sure. Spoiler alert, sounds like <laughs> That can't be right. Hold up. Oh, shit! This, my friends, is a Fortin modded Marshall JMP, loaned to us by our good friend Kyle Rasmussen. I'm gonna go through the Framus cab because that's probably the closest thing I have to something that sounds like a Marshall cabinet. Sure. I bet you it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> interesting thing about this Marshall was that we just plugged it in and turned it on and it sounded like Slayer. Yeah, it's interesting to see that the Kerry King plugin is as bright as it is. It's brighter than I expected it to much, be. Much, much brighter. That really sounds weird, dude. Yeah. Doesn't even I sound feel like I'm, I must be fucking something up here. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think that's how it sounds. Well, I don't know if 
the original Marshalls would have had that much top hair on it. Yeah. But all that stuff would have been lost information anyway because they were recording to tape. Yeah. And so you wouldn't get any of that like super bright present stuff. Very bright and it's a little jangly. For $150, you just have better options, man. Yeah. You have better options even if you're trying to get Slayer Tone. You could get free plugins that rip this thing to shreds. Like any of those fucking Lapoop plugins or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, bro, you can get any of those Lapoop plugins that straight up <laughs> fuck this thing up. That's man, funny. I'm gonna make a lot of people mad. I love making people mad. The fuck do I know Dude, about Slayer? you know what though? Like, don't take my word for it. Go download it off the website. That's exactly what we did. We went and downloaded it right off of SoftTube's website. It was easy to install. You have to have an iLock device, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, most people have one, but yeah. um, for some people that's a deal breaker. But go try it for yourself. See if you can get a good Slayer tone out of it. If you get a sick Slayer tone and you send it to me and it's better than the Slayer tones that we got, we'll feature it in next video. That sounds fair. That's fair enough, right? Yeah. Case. What's your yeah. name again, my friend? Yeah. Jeff. Jeff, yeah, Jeff. Right on, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for your help, Jeff. I own super crackers. This is ridiculous. This what happened to this set this up? This is what, this is what life has turned into at this yeah. point. Stage fright. How do you feel about this? <laughs> I'm just saying, you'll feel right now. being recorded all the time. <laughs> this is the future. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh, so yeah. I'm just going to sit here this <laughs> Did we even pick out any questions for this week at all? I, was just I have ask. questions. All right, Adam1349 asks, I'd love to hear both your thoughts on the treatment of violence in metal and its general use as a defining aesthetic in metal music. I wouldn't say that violence is the defining aspect of metal. I'd say it is a defining aspect of metal in some capacity, but not in every case. My music doesn't necessarily portray any violence. It doesn't have words to really lead you in that direction. But I guess if the music is angry enough and it, it gives you that sort of emotion and that incites any kind of violence, then uh, that's on the listener. That's not necessarily on me. But uh, I don't really write violent music, but I know somebody who does. <laughs> it's this elevation of an energy, and I think that metal is fire breathing and, and fast and pummeling. And, I mean, you guys talked about it earlier today with Metallica being this gateway and then Slayer being, you're talking about this tangible experience. Yeah. And what is it about these bands that feel like the next level if it's not that advanced stage of violent chaos and, and danger? You know what I mean? Like, good metal feels dangerous, right? Even power metal bands, they're slaying dragons, you know what I mean? It's about, it's about overcoming, it's about strength. So I think even metal at its most uplifting and most positive is still kind of violent. There is a, definitely an animalistic character well, it's aggressive. about it. It's, it's aggressive, inherently yeah. aggressive music. It's it aggressive yeah. and it's oftentimes very dark. Yeah. And that can be interpreted a lot of different ways. To me, no matter how much metal I listen to at, at this stage of my life, none of it really sounds violent. It it's like it's incredibly tired. Yeah. yeah. A lot of note definition. Like it's fucking. very, very picky and noty. Yeah. yeah, it makes me want to do like that.
All right, so what was your first Slayer album? My first Slayer record was uh, Seasons in the Abyss. My father bought me a boombox and a CD player, and it was my first CD player. And so my mom wanted to get me some of my first CDs, so I had made her like a short list of stuff to get. And on it uh, was Seasons of the Abyss. So she goes to the local Sam Goody in Pinole, California at the Hilltop Mall. And she grabs, you know, a couple of the CDs that I asked for. And she goes to ring them up, and the guy behind the counter is like, is this for you? And she's like, no, it's for my son. And he's in... You know, he says to her, like, oh, this is satanic propaganda, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't. And she's just like, mind your own fucking business. <laughs> and uh, has him ring it up and she nice. brings it home. And that's my first. I got South of Heaven almost immediately afterwards. Uh, and then Rain and Blood. Like, I was just, you know, once I heard it, I was just fucking that's amazing. had to have it all. You Dude, know? your mom rules. I got something to share with you, though. Like, oh, really? Okay, so you went from Seasons to South of Heaven. Yeah. That was like your route. Yeah. I'm not especially proud of this story. I'm not exactly <laughs> stoked to share it, uh -huh. per se. I was probably 10 or 11 years old yeah. when I discovered Slayer, and it was the same kind of thing, Headbangers Ball, Late mm -hmm. at Night. I really was interested in Slayer. I wanted to know what they were all about. Sure. My parents weren't gonna buy it for me, and I didn't have any money, and even if I did, the store wasn't gonna sell it to me. Right. But I was so curious about it, I, I had to have it. And so I walked into the Kmart in Palmdale, California, and I fucking stole it. <laughs> I stole it. I mean, that's really the only way you're supposed to enjoy Slayer. And I had no access to it, but I was so curious about it that it drove me to actually steal it <laughs> off the shelf. I mean, I really don't want to share this story. That makes me I mean, sound like such a piece of trash. <laughs> Slayer, I've probably bought more Slayer shirts and Slayer albums than any other band on the face of the planet. So the fact that I stole my first Slayer album <laughs> means that they got a lot of money from me for yeah, many, absolutely. many years to come. I still have that tape. Really? I still do. No way. I do. I'll show it to you. That's what's kind of fun about doing these episodes is I get to kind of like go back and dig out some of this old stuff to talk about. And uh, yeah, I have the original South of Heaven tape right here. Holy shit. What's and the, what's these cracks on it? Yeah, so, so this, <laughs> this thing's all jacked up. So it has these cracks on it right here. So it has these three cracks right here. Tapes used to come in these big white plastic borders and it was basically an anti-theft mechanism because it made the box you know, about this big, you weren't gonna get out with a box that big. <laughs> but there was a little trick, and if you pushed just right, just right, you could pop that tape right out of yeah. those white things. I popped this tape in uh, Palmdale, California at the Kmart, <laughs> and those three cracks are from my thumb, and this is a, uh, I don't know what, 30, 30 year old tape. The cool thing about tapes, is they become a unique listening experience, right? right? They warble in just the, the right way. Yeah, right? I mean, the, the, the imperfections of this tape are unique to my listening experience. <laughs> right. And so it's kind of cool to go back and listen to something like this because it's like, this is how I heard it 30 years ago. Sure. And whatever speed ups, slow downs, yeah, water barrels, right. cuts in the tape. Pretty imperfect. Uh, all that medium. stuff is like unique to me, you know? And I, I think that makes it pretty special. <laughs> Wow, sounds fucking pretty good through the gentle X. It's gonna sound amazing, why? <laughs> yeah. We're only on South of Heaven, it's gonna take like 40 years to get yeah. to fucking Live on Dead. <laughs> so that's a good one too. So in this box are some of my earliest recordings as well. And uh, I found this one that you could definitely hear the Slayer influence in it. <laughs> And it was back when you used to record yourself playing guitar through a boombox, and then you would play back through something else, yeah. you know, like another tape, tape machine or tape something. Recorder, yeah. And then you would record again so you could get a harmony in it. Yeah. And I found me doing that. <laughs> oh, and this is from awesome. 92 or 93, and I was like 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. And you can hear that I was absolutely worshiping Slayer. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself after this. Cool. Oh, there we go. That's some good Slayer shit there. That's, That's the kid in the video right there. 
probably old enough that uh, you know you didn't throw out any riffs because you thought you know. Oh no, I recorded a, everything. A surplus of riffs. <laughs> This, uh, the Crow soundtrack, <laughs> this had a, uh, this had Pantera covering a Poison Idea song. Oh, what? Yeah, they covered the badge. Poison Weird. Idea. Yeah. Huh. And I was like, I gotta get that. That's super that strange. That's bizarre. I yeah. had no idea that existed. Here's Seasons in the Abyss. Yeah. The original oh, tape. Yeah. I still have that shit from way back in the day, tape. too. Rain and Blood, Can't Go Wrong. All right, well, there's my show and tell. <laughs> but the show and tell doesn't end there. I actually have one more thing I'd like to share with you guys, and this one's pretty special to me. So what we have here is an ESP LTD Tom Araya signature bass. Now you're probably thinking, all right, that's pretty cool. Not that cool. It's in really good shape. Obviously, it hasn't been played very much. But the reason it's special is because it's signed by all the original members of Slayer. Back in 2006, there was this contest on the local Portland rock station called Slayerized Lullabies. And the point of the contest was to write a children's lullaby in a metal style. And the winner would get this autographed Slayer bass, some backstage passes to go see Slayer and Mastodon, and your boy here won it. So I wanted to show this. I figured it was a most appropriate time to show off this particular bass. So right now I'm about to play the song that won this bass. And uh, then I'm going to go cry my head in shame because it's pretty terrible. But anyway, hope you enjoy. should have seen it this morning dude like I, I came out here and i took some video it was so crazy yeah so i guess the only thing left to do now now that we've busted slayer riffs and opened the gates of hell in oregon <laughs> is uh to tell everyone to fuck off and just get out of here yeah <laughs> all right well that's it for this week don't forget to leave your question down in the comment section of this video and it might show up in the next down to the marrow if we're not burnt to a crisp <laughs> by then Hey, you guys like this killer dragon bell thing I got when I was in Taipei? Apparently, it'll bestow upon you ancient wisdom when you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. <phone rings> Nothing happened. This thing sucks.